All righty, I think we're I think we're live, everyone. Yeah, cool. All right, um, welcome everyone um, to today's Indigenous session. Uh, my name is Jason. Um, I'm a Youth Development Officer at Glen Iris City Council. Um, so I just like to do a quick um, acknowledgement of country. So I just like to acknowledge the Boonwurrung people as the traditional owners of the land that the city of Glen Ira is on. But given the fact that we're online today, uh, there may be many other people from other lands of traditional owners here. So I'd just like to acknowledge them too and pay their respect to the elders past, present and emerging and, uh, and welcome any Indigenous people who may be joining us here today. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pass over to Keenan now. Um, to sort of begin the panel discussion. So my role today, for those of you who are joining, is to um, yeah, help facilitate the discussion um, and sort of do some uh, Q&A with the panel. So yeah, thank you. Um, over to you, Keenan. Thank you, Jason. Um, well, it's great to be here. Thank you for having us. So my name's Keenan Muir. I'm a Yorta Yorta and Aurangiri man. Um, I'm also the founder of Indigenerd and the director of the Australian Indigenous Comic Con, uh, which ran last year, little, little less than a year. Um, and what's crazy, I'm already thinking about organising something in the future, which uh, I must be mad for thinking about. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly introduce everyone. So today we have on the panel Heidi or Hyde Stee. Uh, she does a lot of cosplay work and uh, she's, she's one of the most creative cosplayers I know. Um, and we have Kimberly Lovegrove who does a lot uh, around studying communication and the representation of Indigenous people and creating that platform for our people. We have Ruby, who is much better at me at being an artist. <laughs> and she's also a, an amazing Twitch streamer. So uh, I'll leave her to promote herself, but go and check her out. And lastly, we have Phoebe, who uh, is in the game development world. Um, not only that, she's, uh, she helped me particularly with the game area of Indigenous Comic Con, and that's something I've never really had too much experience in. So, uh, yeah, she was a huge help in that. So um, I'm just imagining claps for all of us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, a little about me. Uh, so I grew up reading comic books. Uh, Batman and Superman were, were my uh, go-to stories. Um, a little after that, I started uh, doing a bit more research into black representation um, and black superheroes. A little beyond that, I started um, researching Indigenous representation, but that was highly influenced by my journey in cosplay. So the picture on screen is myself as Electro, who is the villain, if you like, from the second Amazing Spider-Man, played by Jamie Foxx. Um, I try to... Uh, I try to cosplay as many Black characters or Indigenous characters as I can. Um, I'm pretty happy with this one. This was the first time I wore um, blue contacts. And I... I couldn't see anything for the whole day, but as long as I look cool, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, from uh, my journey with cosplay, I started thinking about uh, Indigenous representation 
and Indigenous characters in the comic book world. I found there were a few, but they either weren't given the the proper plat platform, um, you know, front and centre, uh, central character. Um, yeah, which was a little disappointing. Um, so from there, I started doing a bit more research around what is going on in America in terms of uh, Native American representation in comic books. And from there, I found the Red Planet comic book store in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which was actually uh, ran by the director for Indigenous Comic-Con in America. So I started talking with him, I was lucky enough to be flown over as an international cosplay guest over there. Uh, yeah, that was, that was like, that was a bit, you know, you, you, giving myself a big head. <laughs> Way to say, oh yeah, I'm an international cosplay guest now. That's I know what I'm doing. I don't. I don't. Little secret. Uh, so yeah, from there I got to work um, in replicating that and bringing it over to Australia. So last year we we um, we put on the first. Indigenous Comic Con in Australia. It was, look, it, it was never going to be a huge, uh, huge convention, but I, I wanted it to stay, um, still have that community feel. And yeah, I, I think it was, no, it, it was the best convention I've gone to in the last few years, um, to be honest. And that was the same uh, message I got from a lot of our guests and organizers. So the picture on the screen, um, it is our organizers, including our core group, which is everyone on this panel, just about. Um, so our core group, uh, who else have we got there? We've got a few elders uh, who put their hand up to come on board and help, which was something I was so honoured to receive. There were so many elders willing to put their hand up and say, okay, this is a new direction, but this is a direction that our our grandkids our future are going in and I yeah I will forever be indebted to our elders who saw that um, and yeah it came along and helped where they could it you know it was uh, I think our international guest speakers um, my my mum, who was a, a volunteer there, I think she may she may have stolen the spotlight a bit, and you know I I know a couple of the inter international guests were obsessed with her by the end. Um, I think it was it was just funny seeing all these little elders running around and off me saying, oh, mum, can you get me a coffee or can you do this, do that? So that was, yeah, that was, even though it was a lot of work, <laughs> it was probably the best, best direction in my life. Uh, yeah, and I'll leave it there because my, my main focus is on, uh, I guess, this event and my business, but I'll go around and let everyone else yarn about themselves. 
Thank God I remembered that I was on mute. <laughs> um, okay, so as Keenan mentioned earlier, my name is Heidi. I am our Dungari woman from the mid-north coast of New South Wales. Uh, I grew up on country until I was about 10 or 11 before moving to Queensland. Now I'm living in Melbourne. Um, I guess a bit about me. I grew up sort of inserted into the nerd culture because I grew up having to watch things like Star Wars when I was <laughs> very, very young. Uh, so I still love Star Wars now. Um, growing up, I was obsessed with Xena. Xena was my hero. So I, I kind of looked up to a lot of the strong, badass women of television. Um, but she was my favourite, her and Princess Leia. Uh, I kind of, I was big into like reading as a kid. So like Harry Potter's huge for me. Um, pretty much all big YA fantasy novels are my thing. Uh, so it kind of translated into high school where, you know, book week for me when I was a kid was like dressing up as a Disney princess. But when I got older, it was about, you know, my favourite book characters, which led into learning about cosplay, I guess. So uh, I attended my first convention when I was 21. I didn't dress up, uh, but I noticed everyone else was. So I was like, why, why didn't I know about this world? Like, this is exactly where I need to be. I wanted to dress up as these characters every day of my life anyway. So yeah, the, the following year, 2012, I think it was, I was like, yep, going to build a costume. Um, so I... I got to work. I'd been reading the Hunger Games books at the time. So I was obsessed with this idea of making myself look like Katniss because I had the long brown hair. I already had like half of the outfit in my closet. So I was like, this is cool. I just need a pair of cargo pants and a, and a, a backpack and I'm done. Uh, so yeah, now I've been cosplaying since, oh, what are we doing now? Eight, eight and a half years of cosplaying. Uh, since then I've uh, developed from just buying cosplays to making cosplays to now competing in cosplay. Um, so for those who don't know, cosplay is essentially costume play. It's where you dress up as your favourite character and go to comic book conventions or you might even go to the movies or you might get invited to events and get to like show off. Um, I do multiple things. I do it both for conventions, for competing and for volunteer events currently. Um, yeah, so now I make my own stuff. As you can see, there's one behind me right now that I'm working on. This is from a series called Critical Role. It's a YouTube series that is just a bunch of people playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, other stuff I make, I generally make a lot of Disney princesses because of the volunteer work I do. So this year, especially with COVID, uh, we've been doing a lot of Zoom calls with children uh, all over Melbourne who maybe have lost the ability to have their birthday or they're just having a really hard time or we've even rang children who are in hospital just to kind of brighten their day give them something to smile about so I tend to dress up as my girl Elsa a lot because <laughs> she's the number one person who is asked for um, but yeah I also have like Rapunzel Cinderella who's like tucked in behind here somewhere uh, yeah so that's kind of currently me at the moment I'm that's all I do. <laughs> and in the background, I for but I don't think we've said, but so Heidi is my partner. So yeah, I'm upstairs or uh, Keenan's downstairs. Yeah, uh, she's upstairs. So in the background, while she is a, uh, you know, doing these amazing shoots with these complex cosplays and dresses. In the background, it's me holding all of her stuff. <laughs> yeah, he gets the, the fun job of bag holder, phone holder, photo taker, drink supplier, food feeder, <laughs> put yeah. my glasses on so I can see for five minutes. Yeah. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> Hey guys, um, my name's uh, Kimberly Lovegrove. Uh, everyone calls me Kimmy, so can everyone else on this panel. Um, I am a proud nut and dairy woman uh, from South Australia. Been living in Melbourne for the last 
eight years. So I'm very happy to be here in Melbourne. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm actually a stand-up comedian. Uh, so I do that outside of, of work. So I love making people laugh. Um, and making people laugh just comes so naturally to me and to a lot of uh, black followers. Um, it's just something that is just ingrained in us. Um, but for work, I am the Indigenous officer at uh, RMIT Student Union. So representing all the black followers uh, who go to RMIT, making sure they feel safe. Um, and if they need any extra support, I'm there. I'm kind of like the Superman at RMIT for Black Follows. So whenever drama is happening, I'm there, always there. Sometimes I shouldn't be there, but I'm there. I just be walking around and I'm there. Um, yeah, so I actually started going to comment conventions probably like three, four years ago through Keenan and Heidi. So Keenan is actually my cousin um, and we met, I'm going to say four years ago at another youth event uh, called the Crew Youth Summit. Um, and so, yeah, pretty much him and Heidi introduced me to like comic conventions and I've been addicted since. Um, sometimes I'll joke around and blame them for not being able to save up for a house or a car because I've been so invested <laughs> in these conventions. Um, and they're just... Uh, for someone who, so when I was growing up, I was obsessed with Sailor Moon. I was just so obsessed with like strong female uh, superheroes. And, you know, as a child, you know, you have so much like imagination. And so um, at the front of my house, there was these massive like four kind of like forestry trees. And so I'd like um, be playing, imagining that the trees were like the devil and trying to use my superpowers to be rid of said devils. Um, but yeah, that was kind of like, I've always had a big imagination and, you know, been very passionate about um, positive representation in film of indigenous people and black people and diverse people. And I just wanted to like, give a really big shout out to um, to the the Australian cast of Hamilton because that is the that like I've only started seeing plays for the last couple of years and I've never seen such a massive like cohort of diverse people um, you know being involved in an industry that is predominantly for uh, white people so I'm just like so proud that we have a play that is full of like Australia's best diverse actors and singers and it's just like I was so proud when I saw that announcement I'm like yes this is so dope like oh my god my, my heart was like just all over the place and I was like trying to see um I guess the black followers in uh the play as well and kind of like their role um there's three. Oh, cool I'm just like oh this is gonna be so good I can't wait to see it even though I saw it on Disney plus um you know this for FYI if anyone doesn't know Hercules Mulligan who is a very big part of the show is an Indigenous actor oh my god like I get I get chills I get chills in my body when I see black followers in tv when I see them in plays when I see them in TV shows, like now, even like Neighbours, who was predominantly, you know, usually casting um, like white actors. And when they do cast um, black followers, they, their character is portrayed as like an angry, drunk, abusive person. And now they're kind of like steering away from that and actually hiring uh, more diverse roles in actors and portraying them in a more positive light that is I guess relatable for a lot of you know people of color and in their community and kind of being more relatable um so I think the future for I guess diversity casting in Australia is definitely changing and 
slowly, I think we're kind of following in the same footsteps in America, how they, they have their own kind of, um, they have several film casting agencies where, you know, they'll put up actors for specific roles and they're kind of, you know, even, you know, even though there's a long way to go to ensuring that, you know, they're kind of like making sure that those stereotypical roles are kind of being readjusted and kind of not feeding into the already stereotypical values that a lot of um, white people have of Indigenous people and Black people. So that's like wh what I'm passionate about. And like when I see progress being made in film and TV, I'm just like, yes, yes. <laughs> That That's an um, interesting point there, Kimmy. Um, just going back to Hamilton, there's been a bit of conversation on the internet around, I guess, as people focusing more on the story mm -hmm. behind it. Obviously, this tells the story of, uh, I'm not too familiar with it, but. It I can tell you. <laughs> Don't you? Yeah, no, I'm staying ignorant to that because I choose not to be sucked in. <laughs> so it basically uh, tells the story of early America, which does include a lot of oppressive history um, and showing, I guess, showing the, uh, the imbalances there, but also telling the perspective of one, one perspective, really. So yeah. when you see arguments like that, when, you know, there are people of colour saying, well, why, what's the point of um, casting such a diverse cast when they're telling the story of uh, such a, oppressed uh, story. What so you... there actually is a thing about that. Um, Lynn, the creator, Lynn Manuel Miranda, who is honestly a genius, um, he specifically wrote and made the musical to be diversely cast to reflect how diverse America actually is. Like America isn't just white people. America is Latino, America is Asian, America is African American, America is Muslim, it is everybody. So the point of his casting was to be like, America isn't founded by white people, America is created by everyone who's involved. Um, and he, he, like the key point of his story was that he only wanted one white person in this show, which was King George, who is the oppressor, I guess you could say almost, <laughs> or like the, the villain in the story is the white guy. Finally. <laughs> I, I think like, I think with anything that we put out where, you know, the storyteller is black or the storyteller is in indigenous, there's always going to be like haters per se to kind of like put their own two cents saying, you know, this is wrong. You know, this is not what I learned in school. I, I'm so confused. I don't know what I'm doing. And I think for like the entertainment industry, um, you know, they're breaking that mold, especially with Hamilton, because it's never been done before. And to have a play that is not only changing the way, um, you know, diverse people are being looked at, but is also looking at like the formula of um, plays as well. Because usually with like plays, it's kind of like very like, opera kind of style and you know with Hamilton it's very like upbeat and very like in the now which makes it you know enjoyable for younger audiences um, but for me like I'm a massive storyteller as I mentioned before I do stand-up comedy and you know it's sometimes it's hard to create something that is purely based on racism and kind of kind of separating that trigger when you do tell your story and I think with where Australia is headed with storytelling it's heading into a positive light where they've recognized that the history that we thought that we knew of Australia hasn't been told truthfully and as 
storytellers, as entertainers, we have to ensure that we tell the whole truth and not hide those parts that may be triggering or scary. Um, and hopeful, like my hope is that when we start to see more progress in the way that the entertainment industry sh does storytelling, then that's going to reflect on the education system. And there, you know, hopefully they'll understand that the way that they educate their students on Australian history, that, you know, it's like, oh, we're actually not telling the whole truth. And it's kind of like, it's gonna change that kind of conversation and that narrative, which I'm constantly like talking to people about, cause I get so many questions about, especially at university where they'll say, oh, why do we have to do acknowledgement of country? You know, why, you know, did um, this happen to Aboriginal people? And, you know, I don't know all the answers for that, but I think one thing that definitely needs to change is the education system in Australia is definitely flawed. And not only does it not tell the whole truth of Australia, but it also leaves behind people who are from diverse communities, people who have a disability, anyone that is deemed as, you know, I guess n that doesn't fit the mold of um, an Australian or of like a student, I guess, because I've had conversations with people from diverse communities and who have disabilities and have struggle with their learning and they've told me their experiences of being left behind by the education system and with those types of people they turn to popular culture they turn to tv they turn to movies they turn to comic books they turn to gaming they turn to anything to release those creative juices and I think you know even though the education system is flawed but the art system isn't because arts will always be there I just wish the government saw that um, for anyone that does isn't aware the government made massive um, uh, budget cuts to the arts industry so it's been really hard for a lot of artists and entertainers in Australia so by having these conversations um, it uh, hopefully you know the right people will you know use their voice and actually make some big changes but you know time will tell but I'm very optimistic with change as we know we're you know going big going places we're doing it all Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, and you mentioned uh, before, yeah, the influence that pop culture has on wider society. And I, uh, next, I don't want to sound like too formal. <laughs> Our next panelist, no. Uh, so Phoebe's been doing a lot of work in game development. I know she's been... Uh, have you been all over the world or no, not quite I went to America oh. yeah um so I'll get to that in a minute so yeah my name is Phoebe I'm just here to mention I'm a game developer um, I'm a proud young good woman of the my nation in southwest Victoria um so yeah I grew up on country in Warrnambool um until I finished year 12 there and I moved to Melbourne to study a bachelor in game design at RMIT actually um, where I just graduated from this year so I finally I'm a black fellow with a piece of paper that say I've done things now um, but yeah I so I like everybody else who seemingly sounds like they like really were passionate about like nerdy culture and everything since they were young I'm definitely on the like anime weeb like spectrum um and gaming side of the whole like nerd culture um i totally understand people who are super passionate about that because that's just how i feel about anime and yeah so i was going to conventions much later actually um i think i started pax and comic-con with my first few um so yeah i ever since 
studying games it was kind of something that I fell into later I was very passionate about many things so it started with zoology and then went to criminal psychology and then it went fine arts and then all of a sudden a game just kind of popped up it was one of the course subjects that RMIT was providing and I was like I like to play video games like video games are so cool like I my my dad had bought me my very first console was the PlayStation 2 Slim when I was I don't know how old I was, but that was my very first. So I missed out on all the cool Nintendo stuff because I wasn't quite old enough yet. Um, so I came in with the PlayStation and I've always played them growing up. You know, I went through Crash Bandicoot where I'd throw the controller and chew. I would bite down on the like analog sticks out of frustration or I'd spend a whole two day weekend with my stepsister playing the Sims and memorizing the songs that the sing, like the Sims would sing in the shower. Like it just, we just had all these like funny things and I've always loved gaming. So I, I started to study it and the more I studied it, the more I really fell in love with it. And, you know, I'm really proud of my culture and who I am today, but it wasn't always really like that. Um, I am so blessed and lucky throughout my entire childhood to have my dad, um, teach me so many things he taught me songs he taught me dance he taught me language and as an angsty emo teen kid who didn't want anything to do with anything except for the things that I was interested in it was it was really an internal battle that I was struggling because I knew it was who I was and I was never ashamed of that but I I wasn't interested and I felt ashamed for not being interested in it um, because I knew it was so important to other people um, but it wasn't until um, I was actually, I met Kiernan at a summer solstice uh, community event and he, we were talking about what I do and then I study game design. He's like, I know somebody who needs an Indigenous game designer. And he actually introduced me to uh, Paulina Stammy, who's the creative director at Dragon Bear Studios. So I had a meeting with her and it, with, if I hadn't met Kiernan and got this opportunity, I wouldn't have this job that I do with this team. And she has pushed me far and wide. They took me on board um, as an Indigenous game developer to help them really introduce Indigenous culture uh, into video games. And we have a few out there, but there's not a lot. It's still predominantly, um, you know, white focused and especially fantasy games is which um, what their first game, uh, Enchanted, is based around. It's an Australian inspired fantasy game. And those typical European like fantasy tropes of dragons and magic and princesses. It's, it's all there, but fantasy in itself could literally be anything and it can be intertwined into so many cultures. Um, and that's what we're really trying to do is push Australian indigenous culture and show people that it's not just so serious to share. Like it's very important. And I understand the serious size, but I want non-indigenous people to have fun with it because you know, history is really intimidating for some people and they don't want to open up to it. So um, it actually wasn't until, you know, I started working with Dragon Bear that I really realised that what I'm doing is really special. Um, and now I'm really proud of my culture and who I am and really trying to push um, with other people that they, this is something that they should be looking into. Don't just stick to those European fantasy tropes because every culture has so many stories and backgrounds and will be the best inspiration for the coolest, like fantasy movies, games. Like, could you imagine like, like there's like dream time stories and we have all this amazing knowledge that could be like the coolest fantasy worlds. Like people don't even know yet. Um, so yeah. Oh, we. I cannot wait. It's gonna. It would be so cool once people wake up to that. So what I actually do is, Paulina pushed me as well. I've started doing talks to um, the game dev industry and community members and just talking about what I do, um, why I think it's so important and also kind of a little bit of how I go about it, talking with elders and making sure things are represented correctly and hopes that I can encourage other people to kind of look into it. So yeah, as Kiana said earlier, um, I had been to America. Uh, Dragon Bear Studios were invited by um, the Game Devs of Color Expo in Harlem, New York City. And so I was flown out there, which was crazy because I haven't even finished my degree mm -hmm. yet. And here I am jet setting off to another country on my own. Like I was so scared, but I had so much fun. And 
yeah that's sweet that's so cool i i cannot wait until you you know you now you got your degree you can get out and do your own thing really stretch your legs i cannot wait until to see what you produce Thanks, Kim. So yeah, quick little plug. So Dragon Bear Studios are coming out um, with a game called Enchanted, and I said it's an Australian-inspired fantasy game. So wish listed on Steam, Enchanted, I-N-N. So it's a little bit of a, a funny pun. Our creative producer is obsessed with puns. So to have it worked into the title is like legendary. But um, we're working on getting a lot of Indigenous themes, stories and representation there. So definitely keep an eye on it because it's, it's getting really exciting. And it, it may be the most addictive game I've ever played, <laughs> really. It's really good. <laughs> Are they crossing it over so Mac users can use it too? <laughs> yeah, we'll be working yeah. on that. So we're trying to get it out onto like every platform. But yeah, we're starting at PC because we haven't even like released it yet. So it's coming. <laughs> Hello, can anyone hear me? <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, so I just, want to, just want to make sure. <clears throat> uh, what's up, you mob? My name is Ruby Red. I am an artist, activist, and I'm also a Twitch streamer. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so where my story begins is that um, from a very young age, I've been interested in the arts. I'm an artist. I um, do mainly portrait art. So I like to do like drawings of people's faces and stuff and of people and like really cool indigenous designs and stuff, showing off um, 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 just showing off my culture in my work and stuff. Um, and um, from a very young age, I've always been interested in um, drawing and stuff. Um, you can never, I went through so many sketchbooks and I was just a nightmare for like my foster mom and stuff. We'd be going to the store and getting multiple sketchbooks. Um, and I was very into like um, cartoons and stuff from a very young age. Um, as well as anime, so I'm a very big like anime fan, a little bit of a uh, weave and stuff. And I've spent this whole lockdown getting back into all of that and stuff. But um, but also from a very young age, was very interested in like video games as well. Um, used to play a lot of. I mainly play a lot of first person shooter games, but I do love campaign games, which is like kind of like storylines and a lot of video games. I used to always, always, always play the campaign mode of Call of Duty games because I love Call of Duty. Um, I'm also a bit of a Fortnite player as well. Yeah, Fortnite. Um, but I love Fortnite and I'm, um, I'm okay at it. I'm trying to, you know, get to a level where I'll be able to participate in tournaments and stuff like that. But a baby step, baby steps, you know. Um, but I've always been interested in like first person shooter games and stuff and um, always um, just um, loved video games from a very young age. I was also very into like Star Wars and like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and like like Winx Club from a very young age. Uh, used to want to be like a like a fairy and stuff. Yes, baby. <laughs> um, used to love like another TV show called Witch and stuff. So I was very into like um, fantasy and like science fiction stuff as well with like my novels um, as well because I uh, was a very avid reader when I was younger. I'd go through like so many novels in a day. Um, now I struggle to pick up a book, um, but I do, I used to, um, I love like science fiction and fantasy because I like to let my imagination run wild and I think that's what's really great about um, um, drawing and stuff is that anything that's in my head I can get down visually on my pieces of paper and stuff. I used to um, draw like fairies and stuff like in the kind of the Winx Club um, style because I used to love, 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 love Winx Club from a very young age. And was very also love like anime um, art style as well, um, and also being an artist, I'm very into like um, video game art designs and like movie like the art of like movies and stuff. So I've got like the art of Into the Spider Verse, which is like one of my favorite all time favorite films because I just love Spider Man. Um, and if you know me, as my friends all know, I love Spider-Man. Um, so I've just got the recent new Spider-Man game and I've been uh, streaming that on stream and it's been great and we've been getting through it and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to plug you there because <laughs> Ruby's stream is probably the most entertaining stream I've ever seen. Oh, no. Uh, and, yeah, I'm just addicted to... Um, the Spider-Man games, uh, specifically mm. the 
the Easter eggs they introduce, like the villains who no one has ever heard of um, because they're from like the the 40th issue of the mm. second run of Spider-Man or something. But yes, uh, plug, if you can, go and follow Ruby. She <laughs> is the most entertaining streamer. Yeah. <laughs> To also just warn you i rage like something chronic like that's what i'm known for on twitch is my rage like all of my friends and stuff i i have had have, have, have the mouth of a sailor as they say um so just keep that in mind it might not be family friendly for some but um yeah that's kind of what i'm known for i have like i just I'm very competitive in anything that I do. It's just it's just my personality and stuff. So me playing video games and it's such I think it's such a bad idea that I've moved my PlayStation 4 out from my bedroom into my like living room where my desk is. Cause now <laughs> when I rage, bang it on the desk now. So that's great. <laughs> um but I have been only streaming for like uh, I think maybe a year a year now. It's just streaming from straight from my PS4 to um, Twitch and stuff. And just recently got affiliate, which is amazing. Been grinding a day and a half for that. So I was I, I was so happy when I got affiliate because that's such a that's such a big thing, big milestone and stuff. So, um, but I mainly yeah. So yeah, and then um you know got. I, I, yeah, it's just been a, and there's the, in the community that I have around me is incredible. Like, I remember when I first started, I just felt like, I was just, just felt like it was this little me and like maybe my friend Milky, who, uh, Milky Comet, who's also another, another Indigenous streamer as well. She's been my best mate since we were kids and we've been streaming um, together and stuff. And um, she's kind of been my partner in all of this. And, um, and now we've just found like an amazing community where there's other Indigenous streamers and um, gamers and stuff. And we get together to play games and stuff. Like we got together a couple of weeks back to play Among Us um, and gonna be playing Among Us with some other friends as well and stuff. But um, yeah, it's just an amazing community and it's um, really, and it's, it's, it's great that it's like indigenous folks because I feel so much, I feel like I'm in my element, you know, I'm surrounded by mob, mob that get me, mob that understand me. I feel safe and I feel secure. Um, so it's always great. It's great when you have that kind of safe space in such a, in such a, you know, the gaming community is so white in a way, if I want to, you know, so white, so very male oriented and, and stuff. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, so like, you know, me getting on the games, you know, this little black duck, this female black duck getting on the games and stuff. I had my fair share of COD lobbies where, you know, people just say what they want to say or just like, bruh, why? The S&D lobbies on Call of Duty, bruh, you do not want to, oh my goodness, <laughs> we've gotten a few fair share of fights. So, but it's great when you have that community, you know, surrounding you and stuff because, you know, you can do anything, you know. I have my mates when I play with them in like the cod lobbies <laughs> just to get a bit i get a bit too like up myself a bit so and then when that happens you slowly lose the game and stuff and bang the table but yeah i mean that's that that's me um uh but yeah i hope to um eventually with my art i want to make my own graphic novel um kind of like a kind of like a indigenous like sci-fi superhero or something kind of uh, falling in the lines of the um like TV shows and um, stuff that I used to watch as a kid. Um, wouldn't mind having an Indigenous fairy, you know, I don't know. I don't know, anything's possible in this head and in, in, um, any kind of imagination and stuff. So, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. And Star Wars. On that, I'll give a, a shout out to um, Indigitech. Yes. Uh, so go yes. and follow them on Instagram, Twitter, Thing. I assume they're on Facebook, but uh, so in Digitech, uh, a bit like in DigiNerd, but they focus a bit more on gameplay and the digital platform. So they've created a Discord for anyone who isn't aware what Discord is. Uh, does anyone, someone else might be able to explain it better than me. 
Um, basically, what Discord is, is um, Discord is a kind of like a, a server that you can create your own kind of server so that other people can come in and join in. And you can talk to people, you can like voice chat, you can like video call as well. Um, and just, it's such a great like um, platform for people to connect and stuff. And I only just started using it quite frequently this year. And like the Indigi tech server is the one, the main server that I kind of go into and stuff. And we talk about, we can, you can, you have different channels that are like different topics and stuff. And you can go in there and talk about those topics and stuff. We have a general one where we just like to kind of say, hello, how you doing and stuff. We've got a, a gaming one, streaming setups where, um, you can also, the Discord can also let um, people um, in the Discord server know that you're streaming or and stuff like that. Um, and you can also, um, if you're on PC, you can like tell, you can tell people that you're like streaming or um, playing games and stuff like that. So it'll come up. But yeah, it is a bit confusing to start off with, but it you kind of, when once you get the hang of it, it's pretty good. And a lot of streamers, um, have discord servers um, it's kind of a good way to interact with them but also interact with other people within their own community and stuff so um, yeah it's pretty pretty deadly I don't know if that's a good explanation but yeah yeah no right on and um, as Ruby said it's it's all about having a supportive community around you and so what uh, in Digitech have done they've put out the message to uh Indigenous streamers, gamers, developers, designers, you name it. And so they've brought all of us together into this uh, platform, which uh, I've, I'm, I'm just amazed how many, how m many mob out there are like, oh, yeah, I, I've been streaming for three years. And you're like, mm. why? Have I not heard of you? Legit. So yeah, it's it's uh yeah, it's keep an eye on them because I know there's a few things coming up, not just with Indigitech but with esports. Uh, yes. So keep an eye on uh, an Instagram page called Black B L A K Magic. Um. Yeah, I'm not going to say too much, but keep an eye out. Just quickly on that, like, community thing, I just want to, like, highlight, like, how important just having, you know, community and, like, people around you who support you is. Um, and what you were saying about are these, like, other mob who have been streaming for three years and we don't know. I think a lot of the... When I do those talks, I really like to finish off with just, like just briefly discussing how important it is to really like lift each other up so we can push each other into that mainstream because like as mob like I even say this like non-indigenous mob like we, don't, we can't do this alone like we are unfortunately a small percentage of um the population and in, in in like like nerdy stuff especially like it's so far from what we're like stereotypically known for so just like really rallying around those people who are doing things and coming along to things like this and supporting one another is so, so cool. And yeah, like yeah. anyone who's watching this and you're not indigenous to say, oh, like I'm not really part of this, but I'm interested. It's like, you are a hundred percent a part of this with us. Like if you support us, you are completely supporting the cause there and wiggle our way into uh, mainstream media. We can exactly. show up that way. Yeah, it's, I think it's yeah, so I just, critical, isn't it? Uh, I just wanted to mention about the whole community thing as well. Um, when I, um, yeah, just recently been able to connect with another um, Indigenous um, streamer who's from New Zealand and she's been incredible. Her community's been incredible. They actually band together to get me my first ever capture card as well, um, which is insane. So, like, it's just amazing that there's that there's like there's other people out there and she's like a she's such a great streamer she's so funny and stuff and she's got quite a big community and big following and stuff but she's been able to like connect I've been able to connect with her and like now we're all mates and so we're gonna have like a 
Among Us session tonight. So maybe the relationship is going to break down today, but she's been great and really um, helping me su like support me and stuff. And then her community has just been great in supporting um, not only just actually me, but actually also in Digitech as well and all the other streamers as well out there. So like she's been daily. I just wanted to, you know, give a shout out to Peach Flame. Yeah. Oh, girl I, I can't. I'm... I'll be logging in tonight to see how that goes. Because <laughs> uh, so for those who don't know, in Digitech ran an Among Us uh, session um, a couple of days ago. I yeah, did. I think we were apart. Wednesday, Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. So this this new new world of pop culture and technology it's i mean we we've all got our own uh battles going on and we're all going through our own journey and just to reinforce the um ruby's point and phoebe's point it's so critical to have that support structure around you not just as an indigenous person but the whole community, everyone, it's so critical. Like Phoebe said, we can't go along this journey alone. You, you need uh, both sides to have that work. Uh, yeah, and so what I've started in DigiNerd, not just to get Indigenous Comic Con up and going, but it's also a platform still there to make sure that people, not just in uh, mobs in Victoria, but around the country know that, well, yeah, there are, um, there are blurs, there are indigenous out there in this country. And, you know, if you, if you want something to associ associate yourself with, being a nerd, then the, um, as Kim, myself, and Ruby are wearing, then the Indigenerd logo is for you. But it's not just uh, exclusive to our, our community. This is, I think, Indigenerd is a, it's a mindset. It's an inclusive brand to make sure that everyone is aware that this brand doesn't doesn't stand well it, it stands in the face of uh, racism and hate and being inclusive um, but it's not about uh, what I have seen um, personally over seeing a few other pop culture brands it's not about hierarchies or where you sit in this community as a nerd it's just it's a brand to show that we're all on the same journey and we all have to support each other uh, which is so critical um yeah that's all i got sorry <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, Ken. Um, yeah, so look, um, we only have a couple minutes left. I just wanted to get um, just some of your guys' thoughts on the idea of this kind of like, there's been, I think this this term's popped up a bit more, um, you know, with movies like, you know, Black Panther and the Into the Spider-Verse um, and, you know, Sam Wilson, the, the new Captain America, um, this like kind of Afro-punk futurism kind of representation um, and, you know, like what, what your, your thoughts, and this is open to anyone, you know, is this, is this a genuine step in the right direction or, you know, is this something where is it still somewhat token, tokenistic in some capacity or, you know, what generally, what are people's thoughts? Um, I think, um, I think it's, um, I think it's opening the doors for, to step into the right direction. You know, we got to start somewhere with, um, you know, representation and, um, 
you know, they're making the Black Panther into the Spider-Verse. They're all making waves um, and all opening these doors for more um, films, TV shows, games even to kind of come through um, and, you know, make a, you know, make a big difference and stuff, you know. Um, kids want to see themselves and kids, are, you know, um, you know, Kids want to see themselves on the screen and stuff. They want to um, feel like, hey, look, that's me. I, I can do that. I could wear the mask, you know? Um, I always say that to myself. <laughs> and because it's important, because it empowers the, our young people and our young people are so vital to our community and so important to us. So why not try and empower them as much as possible? So I think that like opening up the floodgates but yeah I guess it is kind of like that 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 worry and like is this tokenistic is this just like is this doing the right thing but we like honestly I think we just got to start somewhere and they've been big successes because they've been kind of like the you know, the first kind of thing the first black superhero to be on film in the cinematic universe uh, you know black panther you know Chadwick Boseman rest in peace that's his heart um, you know, and, you know, those movies, those shows will, as like the comics um, have done as well, will stick with these kids um, until they're older and stuff. Like these comics have done for, you know, um, the adults as well. Um, but yeah, and it's also paving the way. It's also getting like, I feel like when I see these kind of movies and stuff, I feel like it empowers me to do, it empowers me to do something for my community so that my young people, like I have, wait, no, I don't have kids. Like our young people can like go out and um, see themselves and stuff. You know, I want to make graphic novels. I wanted to, I want to be a filmmaker when I'm a little bit older because I love film and I love television and I love the visual. I love things visually and stuff. Um, I want to see more. I'm, that's why I do streaming as well because I want people to like see me, see me as a, in as an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander woman doing my bit in the in the Twitch community and like the Indigenous Twitch community is is slowly progress it's slowly getting like we're slowly getting re the recognition that we deserve like Twitch this week had um seven featured um creators I was one of them um for the Twitch for NADOC week and you know it's a it might you know to some people it might seem tokenistic but it's the first step you know in us getting recognized for our work and for us to be seen by the whole wider community you know they gave us an um that we were given to our priority with our streams and stuff and we reached like a shit ton we reached a lot of views <laughs> we reached a lot of views and a lot of people um were subscribing to us and following us. I got rated twice on Thursday that I cried. I got like a hundred gifted subs and stuff, which was insane. And it's just like, it's, you know, our community is slowly, ever so slowly growing, you know? And it's just because, it's because we've opened up the gates. We've opened up the floodgates. The water's exactly. coming through, we're getting flooded. And um, yeah, it's great. And um, I think it's kind of what's important about that is content creators. In order to tell a story right, particularly about the, uh, a culture, you need content creators and creatives from that culture to tell those stories. So while this, you know, the whole thing around Afrofuturisms and Indigenous futurisms, that's a step. But the, the next step is to have, um, you know, African-American content creators or Indigenous content creators behind the screen or, you know, writing the comics. Um, what I was also going to say on top of what Ruby was saying too, it's not like there is such an, uh, like everyone's screaming for this stuff. Like you've got to consider how popular... Moana was when it first came out like Moana went insane because pe people were like this is they did their research when they did that it's the same as with their the Disney's upcoming new uh animated film Raya or Raya I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it it's another one where they've gone deep into actual like con the real content from the South Asian like people and trying to create something that's actually 
accurate, not necessarily accurate because it's a dragon in it, but, you know, there's part of the culture that's accurate there. Moana, there's part of the culture that's accurate, accurate there. You've got Hamilton being the biggest musical in the world in the last five years filled with Indigenous people. You've got look at Clever Man and what it did for Australia when it first came out, like two seasons and everyone knew about it. Like it was just everywhere. So it's not like the content is like just a thing that's there because they want to have Indigenous culture uh, content there for the sake of it. There is an actual demand for it. Like people want this stuff. They're eating it up. They want more. So I think that's kind of like sort of helping drive that idea that it's not just for tokenism anymore. It's actually like people like your audience actually want this stuff just give it to us because we're not mm. we don't want to, to have a black panther movie because oh my god it's just a token black people movie we wanted it because it fitted into that universe it was something where you could see so many people who were finally displayed entirely like what was that cast all but two people were white oh sorry black the two white people in it were yeah. both also from like lord of the rings or something which is really ironic <laughs> Which, ah, oh, that was it. That was the joke because the two white people, the token white people, were from Lord of the Rings. That's what it was. <laughs> I had to do it because <laughs> token wrote. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 Try. Long, long story <laughs> short, the content <laughs> is wanted. Give us the content. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the other thing I was going to say also was mm. on top of that, um, we had, I mean, we had, I've been screaming since I started cosplaying for an Aboriginal character in comics. Uh, we finally got one last year. Granted, it was like written and designed by a white man in Australia, but I could at least give him props for the fact that he went to elders. He went to the community that he was basing this character on and actually did the research, found out about like the people of the area and actually like did the work to try and make something seem like realistic and like accurate so like at least it wasn't just i'm just going to sit at the table hit google up and go yeah that looks right draw something out like yeah this is tom taylor if anyone is interested um he's a australian comic book writer but yeah he created a character for the super suicide squad who is a aboriginal woman um gorgeous artwork i love that we have it but next step is give us an aboriginal creator making an aboriginal character next i think yeah I, I actually uh, gave a shout out to Marvel um, probably last night and uh, during an interview, seeing if if they're uh, they're looking for an Indigenous storyteller. Um, my phone is always open. <laughs> oh. uh, I yeah. It's, Ew, it's three already. It's three, yeah. So, so Keenan, I was just going to say, is there, um, and I guess to anyone else before we we finish up the stream, is there any any last um, messages that you'd like to share? Well, I probably. I'll, um, so you can follow me. Plug yourself. <laughs> follow me on. Um, well. Maybe not me. Follow Indigenerd on uh, on Instagram. Uh, we've got a few exciting announcements coming up. Uh, on Instagram, we also have Indigicon. Uh, there's yeah, there's a few things in the in the pipeworks for that also. Uh, but you can also follow our. In Digicom page on Twitter, you can follow myself, Keenan underscore M on Twitter. Um, yeah, and that's that's it. That's me. Like, follow, subscribe. <laughs> that's all right. I um, mean, so like, if everyone wants to plug their stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, that's it. I so was going to say, if if anyone's interested in learning or like about cosplay related stuff um you can find me on instagram i am at hides d h e i d z d w -E. um so if you're interested in like starting even or if you just don't want to have some if you cosplay yourself please let me know i would love to follow more especially black cosplayers because there's not enough of us and if you're out there i don't know about you because you're not loud enough <laughs> 
Um, I shall plug my streams. Um, you can follow me at twitch.com forward slash rx. Oh, it's rxd queen. Um, and that's where you'll find my streams. It's also the same on um, Twitter and also on Instagram as well and also on youtube because i try and i'm trying to post videos onto youtube as well and they have one and it's my rage compilation so there's that but um yeah check me out on stream <laughs> i stream monday wednesday thursday friday and saturday sundays and tuesdays are my days off but come come chill in the stream yay i'm gonna quickly plug uh dragon bear studios so yeah check out um our team development, um, so on Twitter, Enchanted Game, and check out our website, Enchanted as well. And you can follow along with all our like game developments. We post a lot of fun puns and gifs of our characters, so definitely check it out. Warning, you will be addicted <laughs> if you do check that out. Uh, you guys can follow me on Instagram. Um, at uh, Kimmy underscore comedy, um, you know, and just follow my comedic journey. Um, also, I have a couple videos on YouTube. So if you just type in Kimberly Lovegrove in the search bar in YouTube, you'll see a couple videos there. Um, also on Facebook. So that's just Kimmy Lovegrove. Um, yeah, I'm pretty available for the gigs. Hilarious. Just Hilarious. I am the funniest one out of me and Keenan. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's not hard. <laughs> wow. Okay. Don't start something you can't finish, cuz. Getting absolutely roasted there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Was that everyone? Heidi, did you did you speak? before yeah cool all righty um great well thank you so much um for everyone coming and chatting today really really engaging and insightful information um and just inspiring to hear and see that that all of us are making such great progress um towards getting that that proper representation and the recognition um for all the hard work that you're doing um really really inspiring and yeah i'm going to be following you all myself personally because I, I just want to see where this goes 100 percent so yeah, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, excellent. Thank you everyone for tuning in and watching. Um, yeah, um, looking forward to seeing uh, seeing you all online. So thank you everyone. All right, bye. <laughs>